Welcome to the Daily Brief, where I'll go over the highlights in the market for Tuesday, September 27th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, September 28th. And I'll just go through the bullet points on here. If you want to see the full-length video where I go through the charts, I have some additional explanations of things and just analysis and commentary that you might find useful. But in this video, I just want to hit the highlights of what happened. So let's go back and talk about what happened on Tuesday's session. We did have a gap higher at the open. We actually gapped above R1 at 36.99, right at that 3,700 level there. Prices then fell down to the daily pivot at 36.72. And it looked like, okay, we started a rebound. We got back up to R1, but then pff, we just stopped right there. We were not able to take prices higher after that. As the day went on, prices fell below the daily pivot again. Actually, they'd come down to it earlier, but this time it did not hold. We went to the unchanged level, then ended up going negative, and then all the way down to S1 at 36.28. S1 did hold, and that's kind of a big deal. That's kind of matching up with the low that was set yesterday and the low that was set in Friday's session and the low that was set back in June. This is this range that we're in right now is kind of the support area that we're hanging on to. But S1 did hold and prices bounced back up to the unchanged level. They drifted a little bit lower going into the close, but you might be able to chalk this up as late day buying by some of the smart money. So prices then ended up drifting lower and stayed negative. <clears throat> As we went right into the close, we went back up to the unchanged level and then just kind of drifted down, set another 52-week low. We ended up being down 0.21%. The NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 were actually up, not very much, but they were positive on the day. Volume was above average. Technicals, they're negative overall, but oversold. Because we're really freaked out about inflation and interest rates, both within the U.S. and outside the U.S., and then we had some Fed speak that came out, which really didn't add any clarity to anything, but I'll go through it here. Stocks, they looked to rebound early, and the NASDAQ had, at one point was up over 2% right after the open. The S&P itself was up over a percent, but they're still being really influenced by currency movements, specifically the British pound. There's a lot of craziness going on right now, and that's feeding over into the dollar, the strength in the dollar is hurting stocks because of the conversion rate that's also drifting over into the EU. And so we just have a pretty negative environment right now. Then I'll deal with the Fed speak on the next slide. The dollar, even though it wasn't up all that much, it continues to outperform oil. Yeah. Many indexes are hitting new 52-week lows like the S&P, the mid caps and the small caps. We are oversold pretty much on all time frames. You could be a little looser with our long-term indicators, but that really is preventing us now from really getting more aggressive on the short side. At least that's my take on things. We still have the same yield curves that are inverted with the 30 to the 5, the 10 to the 2, and the 10 to the 5. Sentiment is still leaning over towards the extreme fear area which we often use as a contrary indicator once everybody is assuming that stocks are never, ever going to go up again. The economic reports that came out, we had durable goods, which fell 0.2%. That's more than the expected down 0.1%. If you take out transportation, they rose 0.2%, which was less than the expected up 0.3%. So this report was weaker than expected. The FHFA housing price index, it fell 0.6%. The last time we had this report, it was up 0.1%. The S&P Case-Shiller home price index, it came in at 16.1%. Still pretty high, but not as high as the 17% that they had been expecting. And the last time we got this report, it was at 18.6%. Consumer confidence rose up to 108. They expected it to come in at 105. And the last time we got this report, it was at 103.6. New home sales were up 28.8% on a month over month basis. You might attribute that to the end of summer, to the fear that interest rates are going to go up and housing prices are going to go up. 
So if people are going to buy a house, they better do it pretty quickly now. And this was a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 685 units where they expected only a mere half million. But on a year over year basis, new home sales are now down 0.1%. Not a real big change, but still down slightly. Our trend is still negative with the red line on top and we are above 20 with the ADX. With the down day, our bias is negative and the last two, three, four, five days have been down as well. So we're negative with our momentum. Here's some of the Fed speak here. The Chicago Fed president, who's not an FOMC voter, said in CNBC Europe, didn't even say it in the US edition there, that he's a little nervous that the Fed is moving too much, too quickly, but added that he remains cautiously optimistic that the US can avoid a recession. Well, there's a lot of folks saying, too late, we're already in a recession, but that's what he said. Now, the, the next comments are pretty much a reiteration of what we've already been hearing from the Fed. You had Cleveland Fed President Mester, who is a voter, said policy rates need to be at a restrictive level for longer. And that's pretty much what Chair Powell said, to bring down inflation and to make sure inflation expectations do not move up. That's what they're all fixated on. Then we had the St. Louis Fed President Bullard, who's also a voter, said that the U.S. has a serious infl inflation problem. Gee, didn't know that. And that the credibility of inflation targeting is at risk. Remember, transitory? Yeah, it's just transitory. Well, that ended up being not right. And not only is it not transitory, it's here and it's getting worse. So a lot of people are really gun shy of what's coming out of the Fed right now because they did get it pretty wrong. Then a Minneapolis Fed person who's also a voter said that the Fed is united, yes, and will move to bring down inflation at an appropriately aggressive pace. All right, so the last three bullet points are more of what we've already heard. The only thing that's a little bit of a deviation is from a non-voting member who said it in Europe. Okay, in CNBC, their Europe version. All right. And why am I, okay, I'm going to have to pause this. Sorry about that. I had a erroneous slide just kind of fly into my daily brief here. So what's our outlook then for Wednesday? The technicals are negative and we're oversold. So yeah, you can be down on the market right now and it may just crash through the floor. But we have a lot of charts saying that this might be getting exhausted to the downside. We do have the MBA mortgage index coming out as well as the advanced international trade and goods, advanced retail, as well as home sale inventories and pending home sales. Not really big movers. We'll get some more housing data to help us with that situation. Though all of the geopolitical events that we've been talking about all along, but still it's inflation and interest rates that are the real fixation, and then possibly any more Fed speak that we may get. So our scenarios, yeah, we have to go with the down scenario, but we're oversold right now. So we can't have a lot of confidence in this currently, at least I don't. We can't go with the up scenario because everything is pointing down currently. We have not seen any follow through price action. And we can't really go sideways currently because the ADX is above 20, so we're trending. And the red line's on top, so it's negative. So it's really hard to, at least the way I do things, to initiate any new specifically trend-based types of strategies net right now. You might do some more sideways strategies. Um, if you do any kind of credit spreads or iron condors or butterflies or things like that. But it's really hard to look right now to see which way are we going to go Clearly, the evidence is down, but we're extreme down right now, and so far, support has been holding. So our conclusion then is we are negative, 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 but oversold at the same time. So thank you. Snar sorry about that little snafu right there in the middle. Have a great day. Please feel free to check out the full-length video, and I will talk to you after Wednesday's session.